guys, Dougie Dug Dug here, and welcome to the video. So today uh, I got my sword out because um, I want to fight some mobs. Uh, now these mobs are actually custom mobs I've made myself, and I've invented a mechanic using command blocks, which is way up there in the sky, which basically uh, will uh, naturally will cause this mob to naturally spawn in the world. Now you can see that it isn't spawning at the moment because um, that's because it's daytime. Um, of course, mobs, uh, monsters don't spawn it in the daytime. So um, yeah, so if we just hit this button on here, uh, it'll come to nighttime. And you'll see I have natural mobs spawning off, just so that we don't get crowded with um, mob uh, zombies and skeletons and things. And also because um, this is actually my testing world. But there you see, you'll see one of the mobs has actually spawned. So you guys will see that this is an ocelot. Blaze riding an ocelot. So oh, <laughs> if I head into survival mode. Uh, you, oh, I can hardly reach it. Oh no, these guys are super hard to kill. So um, I don't know if it's actually possible with a sword. Um, at least not on a flat world. Oh my goodness. Um, but hold on, I've got an idea. Let's affect myself with speed uh, for infinite time and speed ten. Okay, uh, okay. Um, <laughs> yeah, uh, I didn't really practice fighting these guys before, but you guys will see. It's called. Ah, oh, you can barely see it. It's called a uh, runaway fire cannon. So, uh, yeah, it's running away from us and shooting fire at us. So, to kill it, we have to kill the cannon section. Um, of course, you'd probably, to be honest, if you were actually fighting this in survival mode, uh, you'd probably be using a bow. So, if I grab a bow now, oh, I need some arrows. Um, let's just give myself some arrows and I'll show you guys. This is probably how you'd kill it in survival mode, so yeah. Uh, and then you, you're left with the ocelot, which won't actually fight you. Um, and will run away from you, like it would uh, in-game. But you can kill that if you want, or you can attempt to tame it, or whatever. But yeah, uh, it gives the normal drops. Um, you can do custom drops, which is something I'm going to talk about in a minute. But yeah, so um, let's see if any more spawns have happened. Not that I can see. Um, okay. That, that's a bit unusual because uh, I expected the spawns to be, well, the spawns should be a bit more common than that. So, uh, what might have happened? Ah, I think I know what's happened. So, um, let me just head up and I need to tweak something quickly and then I'll come back now and I'll show you guys. Okay, guys, we're back again. So, um, uh, there was just a bit of a problem up there, which I will talk about um, when I go up there. But, yeah, you'll see that these will actually spawn, more than one of these will spawn. Uh, and you'll see that they spawn in random places. So there's one spawn here. Let's wait a while. There's another spawn there. Uh, I don't know if you guys saw that appear, but that did just appear. Um, so yeah, it's much like the natural mob spawning. There you can see the name tag a bit better. Uh, let's try and kill it before it manages to kill us. Okay, there we go. Um, you can pretty much just take out the blaze part. Um, so yeah, um, there, there you go, guys. You saw another one spawn back there. It's weird. The blaze has actually spawned faster than the um, ocelots do well they like show from a different range um, that's probably to do with the fact that they fly anyway that's not important to this invention so yeah um, you might notice that these is you might be saying well these are only happening close to the uh, close to the, the kind of area and that's to have set the uh, maximum uh, distance that they can be away from uh, I think it's about this point because it's just the point of the command block up there in a but on wherever the floor is and it's in a 20 block radius but um of course if you wanted to add this uh this could be used as a survival add-on I guess um like to you know like add on to your survival mode and um if you did if you were to do that you'd probably have the spawns happen more frequently so you'd either have uh more of these or you could just change the delay um, to, so that it just spawns like every couple of ticks instead of having what I've actually got set up up there um, but, but then you'd spread it across the whole world but um, yeah it'd be good for a map um, at this kind of area so uh, I've played on uh, a server, an RPG server um, called Vincraft or Wincraft, I don't, we don't know the name yet <laughs> we don't know how to pronounce it but uh, in that they have specific areas for specific mobs so uh, I don't know, this could kind of be to just have the mobs confined to a certain area, but have them naturally spawn themselves. Yeah, the, uh, so yeah, 
Um, so let's head up and uh, let's look at how the redstone kind of works to where well, the farm looks. So um, I'm going to have to stop this uh, actually. I'm going to have to break it. So what we're going to do is we're going to destroy that cobweb and stand back a bit. Oh no. No, what have I done? Uh, no, no. <laughs> Mass population. This is bad. Okay, uh, where did the where did the thing go? <laughs> so yeah, the problem with this one, is, this invention is, guys, um, you can't really get close to it often. There we go. I've stopped it. It's all good. Um, because uh, it actually spreads the it spread uses the spread players command to spread all entities. So yeah, um, so yeah, this is using the spread players command as I just said, and um, and yeah, so um. It, I figured out that you could um, spread, I was actually watching Dragnoz's video on the Ender Zombie, uh, which spread itself, um, it used the spread player's command to move it, and I never realised that you could do entities to spread them, so um, I was actually looking at how to make um, giants spawn randomly, but um, I'd seen that quite a few people have already done that, but I didn't really see anyone that had made it so you could make your own custom mob spawn. Um, so I have made it. This compound bit at the top isn't really needed, um, but it was originally needed in my first design, and then I kind of upgraded the design a bit, and I've just left it there anyway. But yeah, um, so let's just run through the uh, kind of wiring of this. So the first thing we have is we have a dropper just full of items, which was going into a cobweb, but I destroyed the cobweb. Um, so that's the randomizer, which I've shown in quite a few of my videos. Let's actually take my speed off because it's just affecting my um my field of vision. Oh, now that looks really small. Um, we've got the dropper here full of items. Uh, that goes into a cobweb, which is actually a time randomizer. So it happens uh, after a random amount of time. Um, I've explained that in other videos. I won't explain that now. But basically, that randomizer then triggers this tripwire here, and then the block falls into the hoppers, which will lead into this end hopper here. Uh, oh, this end hopper here. Um, that's just because uh, I'll talk about that in a minute. Um, when I talk about the problems I have with this, but yeah, so that triggers this, and then what that does is, oh, it comes around here, and after seven ticks, I think it is, um, just so that all this can happen first, I'll explain why that and uh, why that is again in a minute. Um, it fires a new one after the after the seven ticks. Uh, that would normally go into a block uh, while it was still fixed, and that would fire a new one. So yeah, um, so basically, well, the other thing that it does is it gives an output here. So this output runs into this torch, which would turn this redstone. Oh, my bad. Uh, which would turn this redstone off. So what we have here is, uh, if you don't recognise it, guys, is a reasonably simple AND gate. <coughs> so we have um, the torch from that output there. So that means that we'll need an output um, while this is being output. That that will turn. Normally, that will turn this torch on, and it will give the output around the system. But um, because it's an AND gate, it's also hooked up to a daylight sensor, which um, will only power... Um, the reason it's not just straight here is because at night time, this still gives off... It's really confusing. It still gives off a two-length two pulse uh, in the night time, which really confused me, which why... Um, well, yeah, that's pretty much it. Um, if you guys are wondering why I didn't use um, uh, the night time sensor part of it, uh, it was just because it seemed to fit better. Because if I did that, then I'd just have to invert the signal again. Um, because for an AND gate, the signal has to be inverted. So I thought I might as well just do it with a normal daylight sensor. So that goes in. So basically what that means is this pulse can only actually carry through to the redstone, to the command blocks, if it's night time. So that's basically what this AND gate's doing. That then runs into a, uh, a repeater here, which summons the uh, custom mob up in that kind of compound area up there. So what we've got is... There's coordinates, you get it like roughly in the middle of the compound compound area. And what we're doing is we're summoning a blaze, riding an ocelot, or ocelot, I don't know really. And then uh, the custom name of the blaze is the runaway fire cannon. So it's a really simple command, I mean you can make it so much more confusing, uh, much co more complex if you like. Um, but I just had a really simple one set up there. And then uh, what we do here is we do we have a bit of a more confusing command, which is we execute at r equals six. So that's going to execute all the mobs uh, six blocks away, which will be in this compound. Um, and then uh, it spreads all of the players uh, on that coordinate. Um, that just basically uh, like it just basically means that it will spread all of the. It will target the players, then it will spread target the entities, then it will spread them. 
uh, and it spreads them. Um, they have to be a minimum of zero blocks apart. That was just because I didn't need to have a minimum. Uh, that's that minimum. This this number here is the minimum, which basically is oh, basically is normally um, normally the uh, the minimum is when you're playing stuff like UHC or Hunger Games or something, and you want to spread the players. You want to have a minimum distance between them, but we don't really care about that for now. I mean, you you might want to add a, a little minimum like. 20 or 10 or something uh, if you were going to do, do it for the whole world but yeah um so here i've got the maximum distance this number which is 20 blocks um of course i could turn that up to like 300 blocks if i wanted to and then um and then this is just whether it applies to teams or not which we don't have any teams so we just got that set to false and then uh once again that it, this is what it, what it's targeting so at er equals six so yeah so that's pretty much it um uh, that's yeah. So this will spread all of the players, uh, spread all of their entities, um, and uh, what else? I think that's about it. Um, now there there were some problems I had with this, which was um, okay. Wait, yeah, I'll talk about the problems first. So there were some problems I had with this, which was that the spread players command actually counts the redstone blocks, which meant I didn't realise that till I'd started to record one time, and then I suddenly noticed all these random redstone block, like the tiles, so like that block entity there. I kept noticing them randomly appearing around in that uh, area. I was like, why is this happening? And it was because originally this was just, the redstone blocks from this were just meant to land at the bottom and pile up there. But um, when it did that, the spread players command launched them to the floor. So that's why these hoppers are here. And then once again, um, there was only there was originally only a four tick lag on this, but that meant that this dispenser fired before this spread players command happened. So um, it fired, and then the spread players command happened, and it threw the uh, redstone block down onto the floor once again. But even worse, that stopped the system from working, which meant that it didn't spawn more than once. Um, that was the error you guys saw earlier when I had to come up here and fix something. That was what happened. So yeah. Um, so I'm just going to show that this can be used for any uh, any uh, custom mob. So um, actually, let's just let's just uh, I don't really know what to do. <laughs> I probably should have thought of this at first. Let's try. Let's do a uh, skeleton. Uh, no, actually, let's do a zombie, and then let's do. Let's not have him riding anything. Uh, let's just take out all of the MBT tags that we've got here, all of the MBT data, and then um, let's go like this and then we're gonna give him custom name um we're just gonna call him doggy dog dog and then we're gonna go uh equipment um then we're gonna do that and then we're gonna go one two three oh no i've done one wrong back there three oh i can't do this <laughs> four five um i'm not gonna explain all of why this is happening like why i'm doing all this um, because that's just not really part of this video. Um, but yeah, if we do damage, uh, three, uh, ID, three, nine, seven, was it three, seven, nine, three, nine, seven, I think. And then we're going to put tag, uh, skull owner. Um, I don't know how well this is going to work. I don't know if it will work at all, to be honest. Dougie, dog, dog. But let's try that. So that should give us... Uh, let's see if it works. So now let's. Uh, we need to. What we've got to do is replace the cobweb, um, and then simply just take one of them, and then power it. Um, so now we'll go down to the floor uh, and cross our fingers, hoping that this works. Um, I don't know. Uh, that was the one I dropped earlier. Good. <laughs> I thought my whole. Uh, the whole spread players glitch I was explaining earlier had happened again, but it hadn't. That was the one I threw down. Um, but yeah, so uh, if we just wait a moment, let's see if we can get a spawn. Here we go. Hey, it worked! <laughs> Yay! So yeah, there's another example of the custom mob that could spawn. Shut up, me. Yeah. <laughs> you can also add custom drops um, using uh, tags. Um, I haven't done any videos on that, but I might do. But basically, um, you can do custom drops, so I could have added it so that it always drops in my head. <clears throat> That's actually quite cool. I like that idea. Okay, guys, so um, I hope you enjoyed this video. Uh, this is, uh, you may have noticed that this is my first uh, command block invention in a while. Um, and I'm sorry about that. I've been kind of busy, and I just, 
I've had a lot of redstone ideas um, without command blocks. I've had a few command block ideas. And I've got some set up. I've got one over there that you can't quite see. And there's one in another world. Um, and I will make videos on them. But, you know, I just haven't had the chance to do that yet, guys. But um, I hope you enjoyed this one. And um, uh, also, if you haven't, go check out my 50 subscriber special. Because that was uh, the, my previous video. And um, I hope you guys look forward to the next video. So, uh, see you then. And goodbye.